everybody, my name is Victoria and today I am doing a tag video. I haven't done a tag in a little while, but I was tagged by Christy Lewis Dostoevsky in space and she tagged me in the alphabet soup. F is for fictionalized tag, which is created by Sean the Book Maniac and he actually has a whole series of these tags and he goes through the entire alphabet which I think is a super cool idea and these questions were very thoughtful and um, I actually had to do some research for some of these questions which I loved and thank you Christy for the tag I had a lot of fun with this one but before I get into the tag I recently hit 500 subscribers on my channel which just blows my mind completely I'm honestly shocked that there is one subscriber on my channel <laughs> And I really just appreciate you all so much. And as a little celebration, I would like to try a Q&A video. I've never done one of those on my channel before. But if you would leave a question for me down below in the comments, and then the next video I post will be a Q&A. I'll close the questions probably on Monday. So if you're seeing this video before Monday, go ahead and ask me a question. And I will try and get to as many as I can. Okay, time for the tag. Number one, F is for fictionalize, any or all of these. So there's three options here, and A is your take on autofiction, B is the writer you'd like to write a novel based on your life, and then C is a work of autobiographical fiction you would recommend. So I'm going to go with actually answering B and C for this tag. The writer that I would like to write a novel based on my life would actually be L.M. Montgomery. I realize she is not a living author, but if I could somehow resurrect her, that sounded weird, and make her write my life story, I love her writing style. I love the ways in which she infuses nature and the beautiful way she writes about the character's surroundings. I also really enjoy the way she writes about morality and the bittersweetness of life. I just feel like she would be able to bring such a great perspective to anyone's life and kind of make you see the good in your life even in the bad. So that's why I would pick Ella Montgomery. I'm a little bit on a Montgomery kick because I'm reading through the Anne of Green Gables series and I'm on book five. I just finished book five so I'm on book six. So I'm like well steeped into the Anne of Green Gables world. So she's on the forefront of my mind. And then for letter C, a book that you would recommend that is an autobiographical fiction. I'm thinking this counts. I'm gonna go with David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. I read this one a couple of summers ago. I actually took it with me camping, so it's in quite a tattered state. It has, it has seen some things. <laughs> it has been dropped in the dirt. This copy is probably gross and I should get a new one. But David Copperfield is the book that's most closely associated with Charles Dickens actual life. And if you haven't read David Copperfield, it's definitely a tome. It's over, it's maybe a thousand pages, over a thousand pages for most editions. Mine is actually only 740, 50 pages, but I think most of the editions are quite thicker. But Charles Dickens himself really liked this book of his the most. He was quoted saying, of all my books, I like this one the best. And I think for good reason. It's a wonderful story. It's got a very fascinating cast of characters. Dickens knows how to write characters, if anything else. And it's just well worth the time and effort. I actually have a whole book review on David Copperfield that I put up when I read it. So I will link that if you're interested. I realize Dickens isn't for everyone, but I really like Dickens and I think this is definitely a must read if you're a Dickens fan at all. Question number two, F is for farm. A great book set on a farm or about farming and or one you want to read. I struggled with this question a little bit. I couldn't think of a lot of books that I've read that take place on a farm, although I'm sure I've read plenty of them. That's a pretty common setting, I would think, but um, I'm gonna go with one that I would like to reread. I have read this, but it's been since childhood, and that is Little House on the Prairie series by Laura Ingalls Wilder. I would love to revisit this series, maybe next year, maybe for middle grade March next year. I don't know, but I think this would be a fun series to revisit. I remember liking them well enough when I was a kid, but I don't know if I really fully appreciated them. 
and I honestly don't remember how good they are. So I would like to revisit this one. Question number three is F is for Frank, Franz, Franny, or etc. A writer you recommend or want to read whose first and or last name starts with F. Bonus points for both first and last name. I've actually only read one book from this author, but I really want to read more, and that is Jonathan Safran Thower. I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say his name, but I should have looked that up ahead of time before filming. A few years ago, I read Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by him, and I loved that book. I gave it five stars. It was very moving and impactful to me, and I would love to read more of his writing. I really enjoyed his writing style in general. I actually do own a physical copy of another of his books, and I just haven't gotten to it yet. I own Here I Am by him. So that'll probably be the next one that I read from that author. But I, I actually need to get a copy of Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, because I'd like to reread that one and see if I still like it. I just know I loved it when I read it. Question number four, F is for the love of God. <laughs> and this is an experience of extreme exasperation while reading about a book in its entirety or a smaller section thereof. Okay, I recently attempted to read this book with a, a Christian book club and it is a book club I'm no longer attending for many reasons, but they were not picking very good books <laughs> and uh we just didn't we didn't mesh when god winks at you by rushnell squire i read 10 pages of this book before i decided i could not continue and that's kind of a big deal for me i don't dnf very easily at all and i definitely don't dnf within the first 10 pages but i kind of knew what this book was gonna be in the first 10 pages and this is just something that I don't personally like, and that's fluffy Christian contemporaries with very little actual biblical substance, and it's just, why? Like, why, why are we even bothering? I, I don't like when books kind of pretend to be about the Bible or like focused on the Bible, but they're actually self-help books. And to me, that's what this was. And I will not be revisiting this one ever, ever again in my life. And I don't recommend it. Question number five, F is for find. A book with lots of Fs in the title. Bonus points for more than two. Surprisingly, I actually found one with three. And this is another book that I haven't read in a long time. A book from childhood, we shall say. Actually, maybe from middle school. Yeah, probably middle school. This would be another good one to revisit for middle grade March, but it's from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankenweiler, Weiler, 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 by E. L. Konigsberg. There's just a lot of, a lot of difficult words in that title, including the author's name. <laughs> but this is a, I think, mystery middle grade novel. I could be totally off about that. Why am I even a booktuber? Oh my gosh. But there we go. There is a title with three F's in it. Question number six, F is for father, a work of fiction in which fatherhood is a central concern. For this one, I'm actually going to go with one that I read very, very recently, last month, in fact, and that was Beach Read by Emily Henry. You're probably surprised about this one. This is a romance, a contemporary romance that was just released, and I actually really, really, really enjoyed this book. I have a book review on this one as well. And while this is actually a romance book at its center, we do have a theme of a father and a father who made mistakes and just family in general, but especially a father. So that is actually a much stronger theme in this book than you would think, which is one of the reasons I like this book. It had a lot of like more deeper emotional themes other than just a romance. Not that just romance is bad, it's fine, but I liked the different layers in this one. Question number seven is F is for Finland. A book set in Finland or by a Finnish author you'd recommend or would like to try or find out about one if need be. It'll be fun. This actually was fun. I did have to do some research for this. I've not read any Finnish authors, sadly. Actually something, side note, going off on a tangent for a moment, but something that I would like to do, maybe next year I will start this, I would love to do like a read around the world and have like a map where I cross out the countries and I read a different book from every country and I try to do it for the whole world. I've seen other booktubers do this and it's something I really admire and I would really like to try. So maybe I will have to save this book 
for for that endeavor but I found this book that interested me and it might not interest anyone else but, but it interests me and it's by Elias Lonrot and it's called Kale Kalevala we're doing a great job with pronunciation obviously but this is by a rural Finnish physician physician you guys I can't even say the word physician and that's an English word anyways it's a book of poetry sung in popular oral tradition that sounds really fascinating even more fascinating is that it actually inspired the composer John Sibelius who is one of my all-time favorite composers so that is the really the only reason that I was interested in this one it sound it actually does sound really interesting I think the I think the concept of reading a book of poetry of songs that were sung in oral tradition and having them written down is really really interesting I would like to read that question number eight F is for fangirl a new or new to you writer you're really excited about I think Christy and I have the same answer for this one I'm gonna have to go with Brandon Sanderson because I have only really recently been reading Brandon Sanderson in the last couple of years the first book that I read by him was last year I think and that was Skyward and then I read Star Sight at the very beginning of this year and then I've been just going through and reading some Cosmere books so Elantris I'm in the middle of Mistborn right now we're going to also be hosting a read-along for Stormlight Archives so shameless plug there you can check out that video as well if you have not heard about it or seen it but Brandon Sanderson has definitely been the author of the year for me and I'm really excited to read more from him I know he is very very beloved on booktube in general and I think for good reason I know some of you might get tired of hearing his name because I do feel like everyone talks about him but there's a reason guys there's a reason question number nine F is for fling you loved one book by this writer but nothing else I'm going to preamble this question with a statement I am not good at continuing with an author's whole canon I am not good at it I tend to jump around a lot with different authors and I rarely frequently stay with the same one and read everything they write I'm working on that and there's definitely authors that I want to do that with but as of right now I haven't really read enough of just one author where I was like that book I didn't like but I liked everything else but for the sake of answering this question I'm gonna go with an author that I would like to try to read more but for some reason he just never takes priority for me and that's Neil Gaiman I read a Nonzi boys a long time ago and I really enjoyed it I really liked the weirdness of his writing and his stories I'm all about weird give me weird books I love them but for some reason Neil Gaiman is just never an author that I feel like compelled to pick up even though I do really want to continue with his works and I own a couple more of his books I think I own American Gods and Good Omens and I have not picked them up yet and other things just always take precedence before Neil Gaiman but I don't know I'm gonna have to try to prior prioritize him some way because I do really think he's gonna be an author that I would really latch on to and love question number 10 F is for friends F is for friends who do stuff together Spongebob anyone where are my Spongebob fans at a novel that satisfyingly explores friendship I was weirdly racking my brain on this question because I was like I know I've read great books about friendship but I couldn't think of any until suddenly I had an epiphany Harry Potter is like the most friendship filled book I think I've ever read the whole series I think you could argue has friendship at the core and like friendship saving the day every time friendship is so important in Harry Potter but I think Harry Potter would be a good answer for this one because really friendship is what gets Harry out of problems is what like keeps him sane and um, doesn't turn him into a serial killer who wants to kill the Dursleys I think friendship really saves him <laughs> and finally question number 11 F is for far and wide tag feverishly I'm gonna tag four booktubers the first one I'm gonna tag is Elizabeth Ann Reads I really enjoy Elizabeth Ann Reads channel and I think she's very insightful she reads a lot and I always hear about 
really good books from her that I really want to try out and I wish I could read faster so I could read all of them. Next I'm going to tag Tia from Tia and all the books. Tia is also a wonderful booktuber and just like the kindest person. She's one of the hosts for the Anne of Green Gables readathon and I just adore her channel. I'm also going to tag Amanda from The Curly Reader and she is also one of the hosts of the Anne of Green Gables read-along. She reads a lot of middle grade books. She's always giving me good ideas for middle grade books that I want to pick up. And then I'm also going to tag Rainy from Rainy Day Reads. We've been doing a buddy read of the Mistborn series lately and Rainy, I don't know if you were tagged for this tag. For some reason I thought maybe you were, but if you haven't been tagged, you're it. Rainy is just another really lovely person and awesome booktuber and I always enjoy her thoughts on things. As a quick reminder, leave me a question down below for a future Q&A video if you have any questions for me. And of course if you want to do this tag feel free to do so. I'll leave the original version of this tag down below from Sean the Book Maniac in addition to Christie's who is the one who tagged me in the first place. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I hope you are doing very well. Keep reading great books and I will see you next time. Bye bye.